Hey everybody, today I want to talk about doing a lead lag standby system on a chiller, um, air cool chiller. Someone asked me this earlier this week and I thought I'd show it how to do this. So let's start out by creating a quick program to our system. We're only going to really look at the chillers. Um, we can actually configure it however we want to. But we're going to have three chillers. One, uh, two are going to be lead lag, and one's going to be standby. Now, I'm going to add chiller rotation in here, and I'm going to add a chiller maintenance switch. Okay? Now, if I choose this program with two pumps, it's basically going to make um, that sequence for us. So let me take out those, take out those, and add chiller alarms. I always like to do a chiller alarm, especially when I'm doing a uh, standby chiller. They can automatically turn on if uh, the lead or the lag uh, fails to start. Okay, and let me show you why this automatically does it with two pumps right here. If we look at our chiller rotation small, It's getting its input from chill water pumps available right here, which is right here, okay? So, even though we have three chillers over here, we go over here to chiller rotation small, and it's getting its signal from chill water sequencing delta T. That's going to sequence it up, okay? So, this sequence will keep, keep rising. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't know how many chillers you have. Okay. Um, at least I don't think it does. The number of devices running, so it will add to the number of devices running. So it'll actually get up to three if you have two devices running over here. But chill water pumps will never let three go out here. And let me show you that view the logic and inside it's only looking at these devices enable which is only going to be these first two right here and you're going to get your minimum right here as your output so even though we might have a three coming in here we'll never have more than a three coming out here which actually goes into your chiller rotation small which means it's only going to look at the device rank and only turn on the two chillers um, for that. So what if we had three pumps? Okay, that's where it changes a little bit. So if I go down to three pumps, now it will actually allow a third chiller to turn on. And if that's not what we're wanting... Then we got to play with these maintenance switches and these alarms, okay, to turn off uh, one of the lead lag chillers, okay? So the alarms aren't tied to anything. I wish they were. I wish there was an option in here that it would actually tie the alarms in, but they don't. So you have these chill water alarms, and the maintenance switches are. So when the maintenance switch goes disabled, it disables the chiller okay so what i do with these alarms is i come in here and just create a quick activity um to use these alarms to go into the maintenance switch spot now the maintenance switch is the enum on this is disable slash enable and the enum on this is normal alarm so i need to combine those two enums which isn't a problem so we come in here to view the logic and i know i'm going to need an enum and this one's going to be let's say the maintenance switch so this is uh disable enable and we don't want the one with the space we want the one with the slash and let me call this ms1 for maintenance switch one. Okay. And then I'm going to need an enum here for my alarm. 
Okay. Alarm one, and that's going to be normal alarm. So if I can find that, there we go. And really, I could throw an ore block out here. Give it enough room because it's going to create our boolean translation for us. As long as we look at this boolean translation, and as long as it matches up, so disable is false, enable is true. Over here, normal is false, alarm is true. But remember, I said disable turns off the system. So what we want to do here is edit this. Make that true, make that false. Okay. So now the false statement is kind of normal. Then we just need an output enum. And this enum is going to be our disable enable. Again, with a slash. We'll call this MS1. And our true needs to be our disable here. So we need to edit this, make that enable, make this disable. Why? Okay. Just going to duplicate this. Go in, rename everything to two. Okay. Duplicate this. Rename all this to three. All right. Now I just need to tie in my disables and enables. So this should be maintenance switch one. Maintenance switch two and maintenance switch three. Now, my alarms are going to be my chiller alarms off of my input. So, if any one of my chillers go into alarm, it's going to take that chiller out of the system and it's actually going to replace it with the standby chiller. So now I just need to tie my uh, outputs over to my controls. So I'm going to go over my control logic and I'm going to intercept this maintenance switch with the maintenance switch that we created. There's one. There is two. And there's three. So now I'm tied into those maintenance switches. So now what happens is if any one of my chillers go into alarm, it's going to activate that maintenance switch, which is going to take that chiller out of play in my rotation. Okay. But you said I got three pumps. I don't, I only want at least a maximum of two chillers to run that's no problem all you have to do is come in here and view this logic do a add another minimum right here um, maybe add in a float 
and call it Mac Chillers Running. I'm going to put a default value of 2 in here, but we can do whatever, and I can add to this min. So now we'll never have more than two um, chillers running out here because we're going to manipulate this program to only send out a max of two. Again, it'll go down to zero, and it'll go up to one, two, but it'll never go past two because it's always this is going to be the minimum, not allow it to go above two. So that's how you would do a lead lag standby on a chill water system. Thanks for watching.